Welcome back and many thanks indeed for your time. Daily Graphic, NDC has proven leadership record according to President Mahama. Also, Parliament approves 3.2 tax uh, dollar tax uh, waiver on mathematical sets. Uh, we were discussing that earlier. Virtual uh, premiere of Corona Life at 1 p.m. today. And also episode four of Solutions Goes Live on Facebook is from the stables of the Graphic uh, Communications Group Limited. Child trafficking lingers despite laws against practice Three rescued in a front plains, and you can count with a photo of children who have been rescued. The Ghanaian Times this morning says voter registration exercise easy registers over 4.4 million in second week. Uh, Greater Accra tops with 20.9% uh, registered voters. Ghana's confirmed COVID-19 cases hits 24,518. 20,187 recover or have been discharged and 139 have died. Ghana losing fight against COVID-19, says the NDC, as they list 10 points to prove their case. EC registers over 4.4 million people in the second week. And also the bank online or use our escorts for withdrawals. Police alert Kumasi residents as uh, they, they say that robbery cases have gone up high. BNFT says IBM appoints Angela Tremantin Juma as first African and female regional head. That's what we're creating. The government directs uh, SOEs, state owned enterprises, to cut down budgets. But economists argue move could be counterproductive, especially when we have the SIGA trying to revamp and make sure that these state owned enterprises are uh, fully functional. Use borrowed monies for productive activities, AFDB tells. Africa. The Daily Guide, Mahama stokes tribal fire. Ghana will be worse off under Mahama, says Professor Sivina Dead. And the Duji Tamaklo yesterday gave uh, a litany of some positions that he holds in government presently, various board chairs, including that of the NDPC, where his boss. And he says that, well, of course, he won't want President Kufado to lose so that he loses all those opportunities. Pro Vice Chancellor Defense, UPSA's VC, and Akufado clocks 80. Uh, Adokufo, I beg your pardon, clocks 80, a former defense minister, fantastic gentleman, a former MP, is 80. Happy birthday, sir. The Finder newspaper, over 4.4 million voters registered. Greater Accra region leads with 20.9% EC. May Allah bless you, your good work. Chief Imam tells Dr. Bormia. IBM appoints Angela Chairman Ting, Chimo, and Ivory Coast Vice President Daniel Kablan Duncan has resigned. If you find the Finder newspaper, I'm sure you can get in there. Let's go on to Zoom now and speak with uh, Eric Chum. Eric Chum is joining us on behalf of the New Patriotic Party. Later, we'll be joined by Sam Mukujetua Blakwa, who is also the Member of Parliament for the Norton Constituency. Earlier, I'd stated that the Audeme Secondary School, um, you know, had been named as one of the places that had recorded COVID-19 cases. It's turned out that they have not recorded the case yet. What the case actually is that last weekend, some of the students were asked to go out and weed and they were crowded together. We'll show you the video if we have time later on. But Eric, welcome. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, good morning, Johnny. Uh, my pleasure all the way. The NDC says your government has failed in the fight against COVID-19. They listed 10 things. Uh, I'm sure you have seen them, the reasons. Maybe uh, as we go along, I could rehash some of them. But what do you make of that press conference held yesterday by Sami Jemfi? Have you failed? <laughs> well, uh, to start with, uh, I'll say good morning to you. Good morning to all the um, viewers of TV3 uh, this morning. Uh, as you know, um, I actually came all the way to the studios and it just happened that... Um, has been uh, scheduled for Zoom. So I, need, I had to find um, a place to, to, to speak to you. Mm. Um, I'll say that uh, we all know that it's imperative that in this particular uh, pandemic situation, we all stay safe, mm -hmm. uh, stick to the uh, various protocols as prescribed by the experts, I mean, the social distancing, uh, the issues to do the hygienic practices, washing of hands, mm -hmm. using uh, sanitizers, and all, a host of other things that you have to do to keep yourself safe. And for me, I think that once we get opportunities like these, mm -hmm. uh, it's always important that um, we reiterate this, those points. Um, for me, in terms of the uh, press conference done by the NDC yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's politics as usual for them. Uh, if you recall, even from the onset, 
when uh, we started recording some of these uh, COVID-19 cases. Uh, they hurriedly put together a, a committee. I, uh, they kind of called it the a response team was of some sort. And we're churning out all sorts of things that, as far as I'm concerned, uh, was not the right thing to do, especially when we had all agreed that in a pandemic situation like this, we were supposed to be singing from the same hymn sheet. And in terms of education and uh, trying to uh, get our people to have an appreciation of what it is to do, mm. uh, it wasn't necessary to be uh, speaking across purposes, but that's what the NDC chose to do. And if you want to do a comparison in terms of how this particular pandemic has bedeviled nations, I mean, nations that you and I know that in terms of what they have as infrastructure medically uh, are far advanced than we are as a country, mm. but they're still struggling with it. So really, um, if you want to do that particular analysis, you need to extrapolate that against where we are and what has been able to be done. Okay. So, that's so uh, Eric, I keep I, I keep coming back to this whole issue of uh, the number of cases and the people that have been able to be um, through our uh, health professionals and the medical uh, experts been able to uh, find a way of using various treatment protocols to get them to be healthy as we speak today. So for me. Uh, was it imperative that even if there's an opportunity for us to save even one life and as a result of something that has happened, those people have lost their life. It's unfortunate. It shouldn't happen. But if you want to look at it from how government has been able to uh, deal with this particular matter mm. in terms of the conviction that has been shown by the president and the decisions that have been taken over the period, I mean... You don't expect anything different from an okay. opposition party. Uh, Eric, I, really, I, I, I put a question uh, to you. I put a question to you shortly, but just to announce uh, live on air that we're expecting the Honorable Sam Okujetua Blackwa, MP for North Tong, on the ticket of the NDC. If you are close by him, tell him we've been calling him, and so he should join us via Zoom and let's have the conversation. But Eric, the ten points that the NDC raises yesterday, for example, they raised yesterday. One, they say Ghana has recorded over twenty-four thousand positive cases, with one thirty-nine mm -hmm. people dying. Two, they say mm -hmm. the long-standing problem of lack of PPEs for health workers still pertains. Three, alarming COVID-19 infections among top government officials. And they will go on to list uh, uh, the names and talk about those who have died, the uh, Honorable KK Sam and uh, Sir John and, and all. Now, they are talking also about the rising phenomenon of the shutdown of key government institutions, COCO Board, GMPC, BOST, NHI, Ministry of Finance, the Supreme Court, part of it, the Ministry of Education, the National Health Insurance Authority, and others. They are talking about the significant reduction of testing and contact tracing. Also talking about the lack of isolation centers to contain rising positive cases and you're asking people to go home. They're talking about the inadequacy of health personnel to manage COVID-19 cases and that the system is overwhelmed. The inconsistent and doubtful data on Ghana's COVID-19 situation. Finally, the non-adherence to COVID-19 safety protocols by the major majority of Ghanaians, particularly by the ruling uh, New Patriotic Party. And they use Carlos as a test, a, a, a test case. These are the 10 charges that they have laid with, with facts, as they like to put it. Maybe we'd like to take it one after the other and uh, stay with PPEs, for example. Lack of PPEs for health workers. Yesterday, the Parent Teachers Association wrote that the children in the schools don't have adequate PPEs as was promised. And we're learning that Accra Girls, for example, has 55 cases now. How do you take this charge? Well, I mean, you know this, I, I, I think that I'll start from even the number of cases, I mean, before I even get to the issues with the PPEs. Uh, we all appreciate the fact that um, we have 24,000 cases. I mean, in terms of even the, the numbers, the actual active uh, cases as we speak, I think it's hovering around 4,300 or so, if I'm correct. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we've lost 139 people, uh, which is extremely unfortunate. It's not something that uh, should have happened, uh, especially when, uh, if you know, uh, in, in situations like this, if you do a comparison with 
other places. Uh, the numbers are extremely high. But um, for me, I think that the most important thing is to even to look at the amount of work that has gone in, especially by our health professionals in terms of what they've been able to do uh, to keep these numbers to this particular uh, levels. Um, in a pandemic situation, it's extremely difficult. I mean, we are looking at a situation where countries that we all know are far advanced than we are in terms of infrastructure and the sort of medical facilities that's available to them mm. are reeling under this pandemic. And nobody should kid themselves that, I mean, we could have done anything different in terms of actually uh, bringing the numbers to this level, especially when uh, even the initial stages, the, the cases that we had were, were imported cases. Mm. If you want to also delve into the issues to do with infections of hyperfrol, uh, well, Eric, are you suggesting that, also, Eric, Eric, yeah. we, our case, no, let me, let me, let hold me, on, let's stay on the cases, let's stay on the cases. Our case count is not just because we had imported cases. Since then, we have also had a lot of local spread, as they put it, horizontal spread. The cases in Accra Girls, for example, is horizontal. Ahantaman, Archbishop Porter Girls, uh, Maoli Secondary School, Bishop Herman, they are all local spread. You see, you see it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's important that as we have this conversation, we also stick to the real <laughs> issues on the ground. That uh, in, in, in a case where you can point out clearly that this is as a result of some omission or commission from government. I'm sure that government would it's, itself will come out and admit that, well, in this particular instance, we made a mistake. All I'm saying is that we all know that we find ourselves in a global pandemic situation. Mm. Um, whilst it's important that we all stick to the protocols that has been prescribed, I mean, people uh, doing uh, and, uh, and ensuring social distancing and washing their hands and all of those things. We also agreed as a people, or I mean, the general consensus was that it was almost impossible to continue uh, a certain uh, lockdown uh, position that had been uh, propounded by certain people and close the whole economy down because it was just impossible to do so. Mm. And if you look at even areas where Sometimes they had 5,000, 6,000 cases on a daily basis and the numbers of people that are actually uh, uh, died as a result of the pandemic, right? At a point, these countries even had to take steps to ease the restrictions. So in as much as we have this conversation all the time and try to almost sensationalize the issues, the most Imperative conversation is that how are we able to go about a certain normal and a certain normal uh, uh, normalcy, right? And still keep safe and still maintain. Eric, the president safe, said. Uh, the president said. So Eric, if we, Eric yeah, the so president if we, said we are going to do tailor-made, tailor-made solutions for ourselves, mm. not what other countries have done, but bearing yeah, in it's, mind it's, it's, what it's, our situation it's, it's is. Because you see, Johnny, Johnny. You know, it's also important that even the people who are calling, I mean, the NDC that uh, had this press conference, uh, trying to uh, imply that Gavin has failed in this fight against this COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic, has failed to actually go out there and tell us exactly what they would have done differently. And I can tell you for a fact that if it wasn't President Akufuado who was president today, and the amount of the level of conviction and courage and leadership that he has shown, mm. maybe the situation would have been far worse. They told you they that. told you to shut so, the borders. So, you didn't listen. No, they said so they true. said they told you, you see, to shut the borders earlier. Look, you didn't look, listen. You see, uh, uh, listen, hindsight, you know, this is early morning television, so I have to be a bit uh, <laughs> uh, restrained in terms of the kind of language that I use. I'm saying that hindsight is such a brilliant thing all the time. The president made the decision. He took a decision, and the decision was that at that point that we, uh, he called for a shutdown of the borders. It was made. I mean, this is issues that had to do with... But it was late. Thing. This was, It wasn't late at all. I mean, the Ghana Medical Association agrees with the NDC that it was late. Johnny, Johnny, 
Jenny, Jenny, this is the same NDC that was saying that students that uh, were in China at the time and when uh, in Wuhan, in some parts of China, mm. where the pandemic was right and was actually uh, bedeviling the entire Chinese state, mm. were actually advocating that these students should be brought home right. against, uh, I mean, what you call was the expert views of some other professional that suggested that because they were there, it was better for them to be to be for it to be contained there, whilst the Chinese authorities deal with the issue. But subsequently, you have brought people home. Subsequently, you have brought people home from Kuwait, from UK, from US, and other countries. Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. Governance is such a very complex uh, thing that sometimes decisions have to be made. Ghanaians that were uh, domiciled in some parts of the world, where for one reason or the other, they got caught up in this particular pandemic and there were restrictions. Strict adherence had to be made where they were brought in and quarantined over a 14 day period. And I'm saying that these decisions would be made any day based on proper evidence and proper information that is available to government. And I'm saying that nobody says that if even one person loses their life or people mm. actually get infected, it's a good thing. And I'm saying that because we find ourselves in, a, in times where every part of the world, there's no country in this world that has not had issues with the COVID-19 situation, right? So for anybody to suggest that uh, just a mere closure of a border, right? We had issues of people who were even coming into the country using unauthorized uh, uh, routes. And that was and why you had, did that. And that was why you needed PPEs. You don't have PPEs yeah, at this time. But listen, listen. As we speak, mm. as we speak, mm. this whole conversation even surrounding PPEs, we also know. You see, it's important that we have this conversation in the context of our Ghanaian situation and even a global situation. Government, through the efforts of the, uh, through the uh, efforts of the Ministry of Trade and Industry, got and commissioned local Ghanaian companies immediately when the pandemic hit to produce PPEs locally. Again, we had to go through a situation where PPEs, which are in high demand because this thing was of a global nature, everywhere in the world, which was exposed to the exigencies of demand and supply, and still got some PPEs in. It, it, it's possible uh, Eric, that- Eric, can I ask you a question? It's possible, Eric, it's can I ask you a question quickly? Eric, can that, I ask you a question? So anybody, Eric, so, so- the, the three companies, the three companies that were commissioned, Eric, Eric, the three companies that were commissioned to produce these local PPEs, the cloth mask, they were supposed to produce 3.6 million PPEs per week. And the understanding I got from the health minister, Honorable Kukua Jimamein, was that these were going to be flooded on the market. As we speak, the Parent Teachers Association say, shut down the schools because the promise of giving every student three PPEs is not happening. Some of the schools don't have it. They are not adequate. The health professionals are complaining, and you still insist that you have done well? Johnny, Johnny, you see, in a situation like this, and I mean, I keep going back to make comparisons because in the context of a global pandemic where countries everywhere, I mean, those issues about countries uh, clamoring, and uh, doing everything for uh, ventilators and masks and all sorts of things. And by virtue of the fact that there was increased demand, there were issues. But even that, in the face of that, Ghana managed to activate one local uh, uh, solutions to the problem and also was able to go onto the international market to be able to bring in PPs adequately enough to resource our healthcare professionals. They say now, they say they don't have the PPEs, Eric. But that's, for you as a journalist, for you as a journalist and as a media a media personnel, you cannot make such a categorical general statement when it turns out that maybe a few places, there are a few instances where, by virtue of either uh, Eric, I am not a doctor. I am not a nurse. When the doctors. Yeah. And the it's nurses the and the teachers so associations the say they don't so have the PPEs. It is, it I have to believe the them. They no, don't have it. it. That every single health professional in this country 
every single school in this country, every child in this country that is in school today does not have PPE. Is that what the, the case? No, is? you are you are asking. To see, Eric, that, allow me to ask my question. Allow me to ask yeah, my question. I, have, I, have I, I am here with you alone, so allow me to ask my question. Right. I'm here okay. with you alone, right. so allow me to ask my question. Now I'm saying that the promise was made. For example, that before schools reopen, every single student in school now will get at least three washable face masks. As we Dude, speak, as we speak, hold on. I, as we the speak, parent I, teachers I, associations I, say, and yes, I can I, read the statement to you. They the, say there's inadequate the, 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 PPEs in the school. So when, when you when you when you start a question and you, you you list or you emphasize on a particular number, and now you you go further and start asking questions about there is inadequate. There's a certain tinge of mischief in there. Is it the case that any child has been in these secondary schools and has not had at least one or two PPEs? Eric, what was the promise? Eric, the promise, no, see, okay. the promise, Eric, the promise in, in was for a purpose. Where, Eric, areas, Eric, the like promise like was for Johnny, a purpose. Johnny, the Johnny, promise is Johnny, that Johnny. we're giving for you purpose, three PPEs because we are not in normal times. They've been in yes, school for, for at least purpose, three weeks and they don't have them, and you say there's mischief? No, no, I'm not making excuses. All I'm saying is that in isolated cases where, for one reason or another, I have not privy to all the information, either it's through administrative or some issues to do with logistical issues, uh, not a, every child has three of these no marks. You cannot make a categorical general statement and say that there's inadequate PPEs in the entire school system that is wrong so the parent teachers association got it wrong whilst we are having this, whilst we are having this conversation mm. you need to also uh, go down and ask yourself what the motivation is the motivation is that you for us for us as a political party and mm. as a government to ensure that children in this country would be able to go about and go back to school in in an environment that is safe is secure under the circumstances our health professionals would have adequate supply of PPEs to be able to do the human job that they are doing. Mm. It is possible mm. that, and I'm not, you know me, you, we've been engaging for a very long time. Right. It is possible that in some instances, in some isolated cases, there will be challenges. But there are challenges everywhere. So, so if, 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 if these are isolated cases, Eric, if these are isolated cases, why is the Parent Teacher Association asking that the schools be shut down? Because they don't feel safe for their children. Let's quick, whilst you're quick to, to, to emphasize that we are not in normal times, when it comes to the criticisms of government and what government should do, you should also appreciate the fact that we are not in normal times in terms of even when it comes to the supply of these things. And that it's exposed to the exigencies of a global market. But in that, even in that instance, even in that particular difficult circumstance, Government has been able to do fantastically well to be able to procure some of these PPEs. That is the reason why, even when you want to do a comparative analysis, as the people who are critically ill, people who unfortunately have lost their lives, compared to most parts of the world, even in places that are supposed to be more advanced than we are, Ghana statistically looks much better. Uh, Eric. And for me, uh, Eric. It, doesn't, it, does, Eric. it doesn't help time. To focus on just the negatives, Eric. Because if Eric, the, the parents, teachers, as you are not listening to me, I say the parents, teachers, associations. You have an entrenched no. View of see, Eric. Not see, Eric. The statements I'm reading to you are not from me. The statements are from the parents the, of these children. What, one and the what, National Democratic Congress, yeah. and also the Ghana Medical Association. You said they are all playing mischief to offer on this particular issue. And I'm saying that the president has shown enough conviction, has shown leadership in the way this particular pandemic situation has been managed in this country. And I'm telling you that this whole idea of a hindsight sort of uh, analysis where you sit back after the facts, you come back and say that we would have done it this way, we would have done it this way. It's neither here nor there. Eric, I, I think that you are over-focusing on what the NDC said. I'm saying to you that the Parents Teachers Association, 
The parents of the children in school and their teachers say they do not have adequate PPEs. Are you suggesting to me many, that they are playing mischief? Many, listen, how many of these instances exist? And you see, I think a couple of, I think uh, 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 just over. Are you week, suggesting that they are playing mischief? Is that it? Is that the understanding I, I get from you? Let me finish. Let me finish. I, I well, that's the the jury is out there. I think that people can deduce from the line of questioning and the insistence on just uh, focusing on just the challenges and the negative reportage rather than the general management of the situation. And that is, I mean, after that, the verdict is out there. And I'm saying that even in the situation where we find ourselves in today, and you want to do a proper objective analysis of the situation in terms of, take government out of it. Just focus even your, your energies on the healthcare professionals of this country who have been the frontline workers and have been able to through one way or the other, been able to manage this crisis up to this point, even if you don't want to give credit to government. Again, I'll go back, I'll go back to you that look to so deal with the issues in a manner that has been one of even a global uh, uh, what do you call it a commendation on how Ghana has dealt with this particular issue. So when you want to take uh, isolated cases or you want to take an opposition party that just wants to be heard and list out a number of things that mm. they claim to the point that they even is playing politics with the death of people just by virtue of the fact that some people who are associated with the MPP have lost their lives. Uh, in uh, case, I, that I think that this morning you are obsessed. You are obsessed with the NDC's position. I'm saying that again. Listen to me. A letter no, written no, no, no. on the on no, the 13th. A letter written yeah. on the 13th of July. This yesterday by the National Parents Teachers Association. Listen carefully. It's not the NDC. The parents of these children with their teachers say, number one, not all schools received personal protective equipment as promised by government. And that's in their appeal to get you to close down the school. Two, that the schools which have received supplies did not get the full supply of the PPEs, i.e. the three okay. that was and promised. Saying, hold on, hold on. Let me okay. ask my question. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, let me ask my question. Now, they're saying that the COVID-19 safety protocols, especially the social distancing and wearing of those masks, are not being adhered to by the students. That's what they also say. Now, they come back with, with a, th a third option and say that in the current circumstance, the children are psychologically unstable and would therefore not be sound of sound mind to write the WASI and BC examinations and therefore come out successfully. We therefore suggest to these examinations to be postponed till the situation is brought under control. And you say that they are focusing on the negatives, the parents of the children and their teachers? Okay, let me, can I take, can I, can I answer your question with that? Fine, please answer my question, sir. Okay. Now, even per the letter that you read, which I haven't seen, it stated categorically that not all the schools have received uh, the PPEs as promised. And that the ones that have received the PPEs, they, they seem to be inadequate, right? Now, this is a very simple matter. Then what it means that we can drill down to these schools that for one reason or the other have not been able to receive these PPEs and resource them adequately and accordingly. Mm. Then it used to do with having enough PPEs. So if you have two, and three was promised, it doesn't mean that the, the third one will not be added to it. Now, these people who are calling for a closure of the school, and the parents, I'm a parent, and if I, my child was in boarding school, and for one reason or the other, they find themselves in this oh. way, I'm anxious, right? But the question that has been asked is that, for how long would we continue closing our schools for? For how long would we be able to do these things if we are not minded by all the protocols as is being uh, prescribed by the experts. So we are not in perfect times. We haven't, we, nobody would say that under the circumstances, everything has been perfect. Because, mm. like I said, some of these things in terms of PPEs and logistics of it and all of those things, and I've said it in countless occasions, it's been exposed to the exigencies of the times. That okay, we I think that we have had right. enough time. So like, let's, do, allow, let's allow let's allow Sami to have a we, bite. A yeah, bite. He just joined us. We can do as much politics as we want, but that's the reality on the ground. Okay, and I'm saying that. I'm just just to round up. I'm saying that even 
if for one reason or the other, you, Johnny, do not want to commend government for the work that has been done. Why, why do you want to make this about me? Why do right? you want to make this about me? And that's what you've been trying to do since morning. Yeah, my friend, aren't you? So don't put it on me. Let's focus. I didn't make the statements. Let's focus on our health professionals and the experts and the frontline workers who, as far as I am concerned, if I take a cursory look and sit back, and I'm not a, a health professional, and look at the numbers in terms of extrapolating the number of people who are fast, people who are critically ill. Okay. And I, I, let's, let's, it's only fair to allow Sam to I join us. Tell you, Sam, I tell you Sam, welcome. Thank you very much for your time. How are you doing? professors have been doing a fantastic job. Thanks, Johnny. Okay, so yesterday you held a press conference. You put out 10 uh, key points that suggest that the Akufo led administration has failed in how they have managed the COVID-19 situation. Eric says, stop playing politics with it. And I would ask, why are you uh, in a hurry to grade the student when the exam is not over? What is your purpose? Uh, this examination has been on for a very long time, Johnny. Um, even when students are in school, examinations are organized on semester basis okay and so we must not necessarily wait till december 7th before we can assess the performance of president Ekufuado and his government relative to how they have managed ghana's situation um i'm, 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 I'm talking about the covid 19 pandemic we are dealing Johnny, with a very deadly virus, which is ravaging the nations of the world. Mm. Some countries have been able to contain the virus. They've been able to manage their situation successfully. Now, today, um, positive cases have reduced. Um, there is no pressure on their health system. And those countries can fairly say that they are ahead of the virus whilst other countries have also been overwhelmed by the virus because of their failure mm. to take certain critical decisions, you know, um, in the fight against the virus. And so it is important at this stage to do some introspection and soul searching mm. and find out where we are in the fight against the pandemic. Okay whether we are making progress or whether the virus is triumphing over us. And like we indicated yesterday in our candid of... Wow. Well, the, the internet is, uh, is messing up right there. Well, Eric, let me bring you on while we wait uh, to get some a good feed. So now the, the key question is the schools are recording cases. Um, the parents Hello? may not be altogether happy. Okay, Sam is Hello? back. Yeah, Sam is back. Let's let's bring, uh, Sam. Welcome back. Yes, thank so, you. So, may I, if I may, if I may put a question to you. Yesterday, you put out ten pointers. Now, the MBB thinks you are playing politics with all of this, and you should look at the positive sides of what has been done. For example, how this whole fight against COVID nineteen started on a positive note. And you should look at it going forward, looking at the global picture of a pandemic, everybody being in a situation of uncomfortability. Oh, man, we lost it there. Uh, let's see if we can bring it down. Okay, Eric. Okay, Eric is on. Maybe we're having challenges with Zoom. Eric, you're back. Uh, so let me, let me ask you now. Cases have been recorded in the schools. Um, and does it still make sense to keep the children in the schools? Because the purpose is well, to keep... It, um Johnny, are you privy to the, uh, the statement that was issued by the GS on how um, this thing is being dealt with on a school by school basis? They have written two statements, actually. The, the last one was yesterday. <laughs> um, yes, the most recent one, where mm. uh, basically they're still going by this very same protocols that we use outside of the schools, where when students are uh, tested positive or there's suspicion of being. Uh, positive, uh, identified, segregated, and then their contacts uh, traced, where they also have uh, in the various schools um, uh, dedicated isolation centers and then protocols that uh, also means that they are being 
attached to a particular health center mm. or some health professionals going forward. And again, like I'll say, apart from the politics of it, mm. I'm a parent. So you would definitely be anxious when you have a child in school and there's a reported case of COVID-19. Every right. parent will anxious about that. Mm -hmm. Okay. However, in the general conversation surrounding how this thing should be dealt with, right? And in one breath, when we have these conversations, it's always the same mantra. Oh, well, we are not in normal times mm. and we have to do things differently. There's no clear indication that uh, this uh, virus is leaving us anytime soon. Right. Right? We all agree that we need to move on, albeit with the required adherence that the prescribed adherence that our various health professionals and experts have told us to do, right? And then tread cautiously so that we'll be able to also, one, bring back the, the, the normal lives that we already we used to have, and then also engender some kind of stimulation in the economy. We've had conversations surrounding how we have an informal, the informal nature of our economy, for right. instance, a number of people mm. who are, for one reason or the other, would have to necessarily leave their homes to go out there and make ends meet. Okay. Now the point is that at what point do you make a decision that you want to shut down all of these things? These are complex conversations. These are decisions that have to be taken. And as we, it's almost like a rolling thing. It's so so so, so Eric, if I if I may come in now, and it, when it's evident that maybe this is not the best thing to do. But as we speak, mm. before all like, there has to be a certain gradual um, re 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 reduction okay. instead of the some of now, the now Eric. Like, period. Now, it is also not the case that government or, and this particular MPP administration mm. would discount the views of stakeholders or parents of children in the schools. It's not the case. And that has been a conversation even before the students going back to the school. The GES in consultation with the stakeholders, but the same parents and the uh, Ministry of Education and mm. all of those things had to go into various uh, uh, consultations mm. to ensure as to how safely we'll be able to get our kids So now they are out. saying that, now they are saying yeah. they don't feel comfortable. But Close the schools. Answer, will you? Will you? No, I'm saying that. That's what I'm saying that. In the case, based on even the letter that you read to me, mm -hmm. right, which suggested that in some places there has been a certain such, uh, shortage or there's inadequate supplies. Those things can be dealt with. In the other instance of if two or three PPEs were promised and maybe just a couple has been supplied, that thing can also be resolved. Okay. It is not the case that because of these isolated cases, right, you use it as a, uh, a blanket uh, decision to shut down all the... So the statement, the statement yesterday, point, Eric, you, Eric, yeah, yesterday, point, yesterday, please. the statement, for example, said from the NDC that there's a rising phenomenon of closure of state institutions, Cocoa Board, GMPC, BOST, NHIA, Finance Ministry, even the Ministry of Education that's supposed to be managing <laughs> all of what is happening, which have, writ have written a joint statement with the Ghana Health Service. If they are shutting down adults in there, why shouldn't the schools shut down when their parents are not too comfortable? Listen, listen, listen. You see, again, this whole idea of trying to do a comparison between, um, let's say, a state agency and a school where you have all these kids that are confined in one place where it's easy to even uh, identify the ones who are unwell who have tested positive and be able to contact trace. And then also try and compare it to people who would come into work and go home and interact with other people. And some experts have actually maintained that if for all intents and purposes, this might actually look like it's a better option. The, the, the conversation can be had. I mean, once there's clear evidence that it's untenable, I'm sure the government will make a particular decision. Mm. I don't understand how anybody would uh, even want to suggest that the government that is mandated and that has it as its sole purpose to ensure 
the safety and the security of the Ghanaian people mm. will turn around and put the people, the lives of the, the same people at risk. And I'm saying that when it comes to this whole idea of governance, it's a very complex exercise. It's something that you need that conviction. And I'm saying, and I use this word uh, time and enough, you need the conviction of the president, of President Akufab, mm. to be able to have made some of the decisions and the leadership that he has shown okay. in the fight against him. So, because, you see, so will you hear the PTAs out? Will you hear the PTAs out? Of course. The, the government, government leaders are not close to uh, people preferring divergent views or even making interventions in terms of what should be done or what not should be okay. done. Eric. What I find interesting here is that in one breath, you want us to focus on what the PTA has said, what other stakeholders have said, and you also want to bring the NDC in. When you do that, you actually invite the politics of it. Because I think that it is reprehensible. The NDC, the Ghana Medical the Association, the PTAs, the media, we are all stakeholders. The government invited us to join. So you can cherry pick at this point. Thank you very much. That's an you have a chance to read the messages now. <laughs> Let's do your message. We are all stakeholders, morning. so yes, we can't cherry pick at this point. Absolutely. Everybody's voice must be heard. Thank you. Let's read your messages on WhatsApp this morning. Good morning, Johnny. Is NDC uh, NDC seem to oppose every decision that the government takes, even if it's in the uh, larger population interests of the of this country. From Ben Lai Teshi Aboma. Good morning. People are now using politics to uh, trick the vulnerable. Uh, school children should be allowed to go home because if finance ministry, cocoa board, and some departments close down, what about students? The same assurance was given when Ghana recorded its first case. A politician said, I adhere to uh, all COVID-19 protocols, yet I'm positive. Allow students to go home. And the earlier, the better from Spat at Hull Barracks. Majid Awudu from Gushegu. I think if NDC has uh, nothing to offer Ghanaians regarding the COVID-19, they better keep quiet. It is obvious that the COVID-19 is a global pandemic and we must look at the number of deaths as well as the confirmed cases as compared to other countries. I think Ghana is doing better. NDC should spare us their usual propaganda. John Inaplau says the government of Ghana is gradually losing the battle on contact tracing and hunt contact tracing has stopped. Good morning, Johnny. It is not surprising the MPP communicator won't allow you to ask the questions by disrupting you. MPP think they can't take Ghanaians for a ride by telling lies and depending, uh, defending empty promises all the time. Why are they running away from the reality? Health professionals and school PTAs are crying for shortage of PPEs, but the MPP PP keep drumming and dancing on different tune. Uh, they must be serious. Good morning, TV3. When you allow any government to take care of your responsibility for you, they will take charge and control affairs, and you have no choice or say in any decision taking. I would rather allow my child to repeat than go back to school. In any case, there have been less contact hours throughout the three years. Uh, Lausanne in Adenta. Walanyo Nakutia says, in fact, this deadly disease referred to as COVID-19 is causing havoc in our educational system. And it is my uh, kind, uh, kind appeal to consider how to protect our students than to expel them immediately to their various homes from mm. contracting otherwise. Regards to NSC, Akumi, Akutia constituents. Let me take the last two. Good morning, Johnny. Our Ghanaians are very lazy. They want government to do everything. Can't PTA provide these things for the awards? Ghanaians must change the attitude from Abdul Rafu Rawuf in Tamale. Good morning, TV3. Look, Johnny, the thing is simple. Let's just vote them out. That is all. Salman Faris in Tamale. This one says, are we going to have frontline teachers? No. Allow students to go home from Emmanuel. <laughs> okay, Kabe thank you. That's what I'm most grateful. Son. Sam, welcome. Uh, the network has been quite unfair to you this morning. Uh, if you if you tilt down your your laptop a bit, so there's too much headroom. Yes, uh, welcome quickly. Eric has had uh, most of the time, so I'd allow you some space at this point. I'm asking, why are you quick in judging the government on the negatives rather than focusing on the positives? And you're grading the students before the exam comes. Uh, Johnny, it's been more than four months since we recorded. Um, our first two positive cases. 
And uh, I'm sure you will agree with me that three to four months is enough time to assess government's handling of this pandemic. And by the way, let me put on record that we are all stakeholders. We all, whether the media, whether the NDC, whether individual citizens who are speaking, are supposed to be citizens in this fight, stakeholders in this fight, mm -hmm. and not spectators. And so if the fight is failing as a result of the reckless and politically driven decisions of this directionless Ecuador government, it behoves on us to, us to point that out and to call for urgent remedial actions. We will not be gagged. We will not be blackmailed into silence by government's con constant attack on us that we are engaging in politics. We will continue to raise all the critical main issues and ensure that government you know, does the right thing. So what, what was the essence my of brother, mentioning brother, that you know, top you government need, officials take and, take, and... You don't need to take your time. Let's no, take the issue allow me to put the question, then you can answer. What is the essence of uh, naming top government officials and saying that some have even died from COVID and also talking no, about state institutions sh shutting down and so uh, well, we should shut down schools? What is the essence? That we, we, the essence of pointing that out is to show that all is not well with our fight against the pandemic. If we are performing well in the fight against the pandemic, we should see positive cases coming down. We should see the rate of infections coming down. As we speak now, we have recorded over 24,000 positive cases with 139 deaths. Mm. I already constrained public health system is under serious pressure, such that today, the Kolebu Teaching Hospital have been compelled to suspend other critical health emergency services due to the overwhelming cases of coronavirus they have on their hands. But we have recoveries that are impressive. Johnny, what recoveries? Uh, recoveries, is, is not my brother. recoveries, uh, no, Johnny, I think you should allow me to flow in all fairness, because okay. you said that uh, Eric has had all the time. The reason why you are seeing an increase in recoveries is because government has adopted a reckless policy on recovery and discharge where asymptomatic persons are just discharged to go home without any confirmatory test. And that is an issue we addressed yesterday because we think that is dangerous and that has the potential of jeopardizing, you know, the whole fight against the pandemic. Mm. But I will get to that. I have spoken to you about astronomically high positive case count and how that is putting serious pressure on our public health system. Again, look at the number of health professionals who have caught the virus. As we speak now, over 379 health workers made up of 190 doctors, mm. 410 nurses and midwives, 23 hospital pharmacists, and 156 allied health workers. 379 in all have caught the virus and 10 of them have died. Why? Because government, this clueless, this incompetent Ekufuado government has been play, paying lip service to the issue of providing our health workers, our gallant, patriotic, and hard-working health workers with protective gear. But, but you cannot, you, you cannot, government, government say you cannot use isolated cases to vet the whole process and say Are that you is what exists. Are 779 positive cases among our health workers as isolated cases? I say that to the doctors who are not living in fear for their lives anytime they go to work because even face masks, some of them don't have. Say that to the workers who don't have the boots, the common gloves, the, 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 and, and, and the other pieces of PP to protect themselves and ensure that they are able to combat the virus and keep all of us safe. Government has been paying lip service to that promise after promise. We have not seen government provide the adequate number of PPE and the right type of PPE that our health professionals need, in spite of the fact that parliament has voted money for that purpose. And you are telling me that these are isolated cases. Hell no, these are not isolated cases. Again, John, 
Look at the number of state institutions which are shutting down because of COVID-19. What's the point? As we speak. Hello? What's the point? The point here is that we have been overwhelmed by the virus. Mm -hmm. The virus has overtaken us. And that is why today Cocoa Board has been shut down. The Ministry of Education has been shut down because over 90% of the workers there have caught the virus. Mm -hmm. BOSS has been shut down. The National Health Insurance Authority has been shut down. The Ministry of Finance has been shut down. The Supreme Court of Ghana has been shut down. You know, GMPC has been shut down and so on and so forth. If we were winning the fight, we wouldn't have gotten to this stage. And so this government must be candid with us. They are failing. And until we recognize the situation we are in mm. and we are candid about that, we cannot get out of the woods. Uh, Eric, Again, Eric, for example, says number. that, Sami, Eric says that you are using the power of hindsight to say, if we had a chance to do this, this is how we would have done it because you have seen them what show leadership. Hindsight? What power of hindsight? The call for this government to close our airport and our borders was made long before we even recorded our first two cases. And so we did not sit down and allow COVID-19 to enter the country before we started making calls on hindsight that our borders and airports should be closed. These were warnings we gave government even before we recorded positive cases. So what is Eric talking about? So I'm sure you have seen I also. Speak to you uh, now. I mean, hold yeah, on, yeah, hold on, Johnny, hold on, Johnny. Johnny. As I speak to you now, I, 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 contact tracing has reduced significantly mm. because government is failing, or if you like, refusing to pay contact tracers their meager motivational allowances. As we speak now, Go government, so government has explained that the one they are not getting 150 because now we are using staff staff of the health service, and so they are, that's why they are getting half of what they were they were promised. My earlier. brother, you know that is a cock and bull story. You engage contact tracers, agreed that you were going to pay them a stipend of 150 Ghana cities. Look at all the monies this government has had. It, I, when, when this, I mean, since this fight commenced. How much is 150 Ghana cities that this government cannot pay? If it was globetrotting, you know, with, in a rented private jet and throwing lavish parties, they would have found the money to do so. And so that, in itself, highlights the misplaced priorities of this. Sam, Sam answer this final we question for now, me. Johnny, Sam, Johnny, hold on, hold on. Uh, sorry, sorry, we, we've run out of As time. Answer now, this final question for me. Sorry, sorry, we've run out of time. Sorry, answer this final question for me. The PTAs associations have issued a statement to suggest that. Uh, for some reason, the schools should be shut down. They are appealing to government because of the lack of PPEs, uh, lack of isolation centers in the school, and many others. And they are saying that the children may not be in the right frame of mind to be able to sit and pass the exam. But the GES and the Ghana Health Service have put together a joint statement to say, don't worry, the schools are safe. We are doing everything we can to make sure that your children are safe. What does the NDC think of this? Authorities are assuring you the PTAs are agitated. What do you say? I mean, it is very clear that the lives and safety of our innocent children who are in various secondary schools don't matter to President Ekufuado and this government. But is it Johnny, like that, Johnny, they would Johnny, not have taken he, you, a reckless and irresponsible decision of reopening secondary schools without testing SHS students and teachers and workers and without putting in place adequate measures to ensure that our children are safe. This is not the NBC talking. We are talking about parents who care about their children. We are talking about teachers who live with their children and who have seen the risk that these children are exposed to. Mm. How do you reopen secondary schools in this time of COVID-19 without testing teachers, without testing workers, without testing the students, and without putting in place adequate measures to ensure that they are safe? Okay, thank you. Only yesterday, 50 students at Accra Girls caught the virus. We have seen over 16 schools recording positive cases. And, and in so, fact, the and, information and so, and so, has shown that hundreds of these schools have recorded positive cases 
of the virus. Okay. We are not seeing that because we are not testing. We are not conducting. Let, let Eric have control. the final bite. Eric, you and have no, the final no, bite. No, no, Let me conclude. Let me conclude before you can't see. Okay. Let me have Eric, no, let's no, let me that And so, and so, and so, the only reasonable thing for this government to do buy some of the things that is to I mean, close the schools, test the students, and allow those that. who. Eric, you have the final word. What do you say? Okay. All I'm saying is that all of this conversation coming from the NDC, as far as I'm concerned, it's just red herrings. I'm, I've stated categorically that it is in government's own interest even to continue consulting, deliberating with the various stakeholders and come to certain logical conclusions when it comes to this matter of COVID-19. Okay. And government has done so from the onset and from the word go. It is okay for people to have, to express disquiet mm -hmm. and to express dissatisfaction with certain aspects of how this thing has been managed. But we all know, by and large, if you want to compare how this government has fared in terms of the management of this COVID-19 okay. it's gone to a place where even on a global landscape, the president's leadership and the conviction that he has shown and the direction that he has actually uh, displayed okay. has been commended. Thank you. Now, I mean, Thank you very much. Thank you. Sami, 30 seconds for you. Sami, 30 seconds. Um, 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 uh, Donny, you see... Let's not deny the obvious. Mm. I know my brother Eric know in his heart of hearts that all is not well with our COVID-19 fight. Things have fallen apart. The center can no longer hold. And it is important for government to admit that and begin to take urgent remedial actions to salvage the failing fight. Okay. What government must do is to close all reopen schools, test the children, to allow those who are negative to go home. Those who are positive can be isolated and treated. Okay. Again, but what government must do to do break you. down the eye infection rate then, among our health. Then, Thank you very much, gentlemen. My guests uh, via Zoom have been Sami Jemfi. He's the National Communications Officer of the NDC, and he joined us uh, later on technological issues. But Eric Chum earlier had been on with me. He's a member of the MPP's communication team. Go out there, be safe, be strong, and wash your hands with soap and under running water. Make sure that you are keeping healthy. Eat right. Uh, don't forget your vitamin C. Exercise, drink a lot of water, and get a lot of rest. Maintain your social distance. Wear your face mask, and keep your hope alive. All this shall pass.